I'm going to show you how to set up this really cool shortcut that I stole from one of our users in Discord. And basically, it lets you share text from most external applications directly into Reflect. So it works really well for things like WhatsApp, email. Uh, I imagine it would work really well for Slack, although I haven't actually tried that one because we don't use it. But uh, I've tried it with quite a few apps. And to be honest, the only one I have found that it hasn't worked on yet is iMessage. So uh, it's pretty cool. And this is the logic that you're seeing right here. You don't really need to understand any of this. Uh, you can go through it if you want to, but I'm just going to show you how to set it up and then you'll have it saved and you can use it whenever you want and it will be really, really easy. So I'll show you the actual setup steps on my desktop here and then I'll move over to my iPhone and show you how I actually use it from the applications. So to get started, I'm going to include a link to the shortcut itself that you can click on and it will uh, add it to your shortcuts in the shortcut app, which is what I'm in right here. And I've got my shortcuts on the left and this right app is called data jar. You're also going to need to download data jar. It's a free application that just lets you set up variables just like you see here, you'll need two of them. Uh, but you know what first add the shortcut in you can click on it again, it will look like that logic I was just showing you, you're not going to need to edit anything on this page. But if you want to open it, you can. And the first two steps that we're going to do is set up these two variables here. So one you see is my graph ID. That is just your graph name. And I've shared that before on video. So if someone was going to steal it, they probably would already. And this other one is an access token. I'm not going to show you that one because I want it to be real. You can see I put in a bunch of X's there to cover most of it uh, so that it's not directly shared in the video and people will not be forwarding things into my own notes. But the important thing that I want to mention here you need to create two of these, one called graph ID and the other access token. It's very important that you match the exact capitalization here. So graph ID, lowercase, but if you can probably barely see the I there is actually a capital I. And for access token, the T is a capital T. So copy those in directly. Uh, that's very important because when you pull up the shortcut, that is the exact ID it's going to be pulling in from data jar right there. So again, you don't need to edit anything on this page. I'm just showing you why it's important that those are the exact text. I highlight that because it actually tripped me up the first time and uh, the user who shared the shortcut had to help me troubleshoot it. So anyway, um, set up those two. And if you haven't yet generated an access token, let me show you that really quick. If you have generated an access token for Reflect, you can skip over this next part. But if someone hasn't done it before, I don't want them to be uh, intimidated because it's actually quite easy. So let me go to Reflect's API documentation and I'll show you how to do that really quick. So I think this is the easiest way to find the page. I just went to reflect.academy slash API. And then uh, down here, there's this link that uh, says create your credentials here. I actually can't click on that in the video because then it will show you all of my own credentials. So what I've done is I've gone to this page and I've uh, clicked new. So I can't actually show you my existing ones, unfortunately. Um, but I can show you the new page because it doesn't display it. So it's just at reflect.app slash developer slash OAuth. And here you can give it any name, you know, you could call it forward to reflect. Uh, the domain is just going to be reflect.app. And for the redirect URL, you can just put in your local host there. So uh, I will include this as well so that you can copy it directly. And I've actually already written a workflow newsletter that has all of these that you can just copy directly. Um, which, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, you should. I send one out every Monday with a new note taking workflow, sort of like these videos, but in written form. So anyway, after that, you can go ahead and create the client. Uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I don't think I can click that because it's going to show you this. This is a little bit of a tricky one to do without giving away my credentials. But basically, you're going to create this client. It's going to uh, spit it you out on a new page. That's actually the OAuth client here. And it will have a couple things that are going to look foreign, but there will be a nice big button that says generate access token. If you click on generate access token, it will copy the access token to your clipboard. And that's what you are going to paste into the variable within data jar. So sorry, I can't show you that part directly, but I promise it's very obvious once you're there. OK, so once you have that copy to your clipboard, that's what you're going to enter here into the access token variable. So you can just create that variable paste in your access token without all of these X's that I've put in here uh, in order to hide mine. And that's the hard part. All of the hard stuff is pretty much over now, and it should be ready to go as long as you have these two variables correctly and as long as you've generated the correct access token. Now, it hopefully goes without saying, but whatever graph ID you put in here is where 
the saved or forwarded text is going to go. So if you have multiple graphs, then just make sure you put in the right ID. If you are not seeing it uh, show up and reflect after testing it, that could be an issue. You'll also notice on the API itself here, uh, if it doesn't find any text input, it's instructed to give you an error. Uh, I think it actually, if the graph ID is incorrect, it says doesn't, or empty, it says does not have any value. Uh, or no, they're missing graph identifier. So anyway, the user has actually built in a couple uh, idiot proof steps here that will tr help try and diagnose when something goes wrong. So um, that's pretty much it, and it should now work here. So let me go over to my iPhone app and actually show you how to forward some of the text. All right, let's give this a whirl. I don't need to go into the shortcuts app or anything on my iPhone, which I'm now on right now. But you can if you want to see it. It will mirror exactly what we were just doing on desktop. But I am not going to do that because, again, you don't really need to. So let's give it a whirl. I'm in an email here that's part of a newsletter I subscribe to. And let's say it's got some SEO tips that I want to try. I'm going to select the text that I want to forward. Now, if you do want to forward the entire email into Reflect, I actually have an older video where I set up a Zapier integration that lets you just forward the entire email into Reflect. But this is going to be for a specific text. So I think this is actually a good use case. I wouldn't want this whole email in Reflect. I just want a chunk of it. So I'm going to tap and hold on some text and select however much that I want. And then I'm going to click on this Share button. And you might be tempted to click on the Reflect button. Don't do that. It will not work. Uh, you can use that for... Um, you know, if you, for example, open a tweet, you can share the whole tweet in there, but it's not going to work for selected highlighted text. And it will tell you that actually I can just show you, um, sharing text highlights does not work. So I'm going to dismiss, dismiss that, um, click back and go all the way to the bottom. I now see this forward to reflect. And if I click on that, the first time you click on it, it's going to ask you for some permissions, which you can just allow. And then you'll see the screen I'm on right now. What do you want to do with the OCR text? I almost always want to append it to my daily note. Some people might want to create a new note, but I'm going to append to my daily note. And then we see that successful check mark in that top basil above. So now I can go back into Reflect, and it's not quite instantaneous, but it is pretty quick. So let's go see if it worked. There, that was actually very fast. I probably only cut out like a few seconds there. So um, now I see this just as a bullet item in my daily note. And it's exactly the text that I copied. So uh, let me do another example. I think WhatsApp is a really good one. Uh, this probably also works with Slack and whatnot, like I mentioned, but I haven't actually tried that because we do most of our work communication on WhatsApp and Reflect. But uh, let me go find an example there that I can show you. OK, so here I'm in WhatsApp. Uh, this is a chat I have with a local paraglider here in Austria that does tandem flights. And he gave me some bad news that I won't be able to fly on Friday like I was hoping. Let's say that I want to save this in my notes, so I'm going to long tap on it. And then I can click forward. And now at the bottom here, I guess I could select other messages, but that's just an automated one up top, so I don't want to select that one. And I'm going to once again click that share button in the bottom left. It might be kind of hard to see on the screen share. There we go. And again, avoid the temptation to click the reflect button. And we're again just going to click forward to reflect. It's going to give us the same options, and I'll also append this to a daily note. And let's go see if that worked. Again, not quite instantaneous, but it is pretty close. So that one actually took a little bit longer than the email one. Not really sure why, but there we go. We see the exact text. And then once it's in your daily note, you can organize it however you'd like. If you really want to get fancy, you could go back into the shortcut app and start you know, editing it, put it under parent bullets. But I haven't messed around with any of that, honestly, because I just want to get the text directly in there. So. Um, that's about it. Let me know if you have any other applications of this. It's a really useful thing to set up, so just that you have it and you can use it whenever you want.